Hey everyone, Keegan here with Dark Arrow. If you're new to our channel, what we've been up to is building and engineering a new kit aircraft called the Dark Arrow 1. It's a composite space aircraft made primarily out of carbon fiber parts like this top cowling section right here. In order to make this top cowling section out of carbon fiber, we first had to make a mold pattern. We use this machine to do that. So I want to break this up into two part video series. In the first part, I want to talk about this machine in particular, why we chose it, some of the details about it, some of the upgrades that we had to make to it in order to achieve the precision that we wanted for these types of parts. And then in part two, I want to go over how we make, how we machine out the mold patterns themselves, both small and large for the entire aircraft. So let's jump right in. Are looking at a CNC router. This is a router that we purchased from Avid CNC. It is a kit build router, meaning that you purchase it as a pile of parts and then you bolt and assemble it together. It's a three axis router, so we have motion in the Y direction, the X direction, and the Z direction. In Y, for this particular router, we have eight feet of travel. In X, we have four feet of travel. And then in Z, we have eight inches of travel. For the spindle itself, we have a three horsepower air-cooled spindle. It has up to 24,000 revolutions per minute, and then it has a manual ER20, call it, tool change out. The machine or the router itself for X and Y is rack and pinion construction, and then for the motion control for the Z, we have a ball, a precision ball screw. Um, the Accuracy of the machine is around plus or minus two to three thou, and then the repeatability is also plus or minus two thou. Uh, it is driven by these NEMA 34 stepper motors, both for the X and Y and Z axes, that gives us around 500 inches per minute cutting speed. It is controlled with Mach 3, um, just a really simple program that you can load up on your Windows desktop. Uh, machine. So that is the router in a nutshell. I think I covered everything that I wanted to from a high level for it. What I want to do now though is I want to talk about why we chose this machine in particular and then also some of the simple upgrades that we made to it that allow us to get a little bit more precision for the parts that we're making for the aircraft. So why did we pick this router over any other router that's on the market? If you look at the market for routers there's a whole spectrum. There's small routers which literally fit on your desktop and on the other end of the spectrum there's large routers which take up an entire room and go all the way up to the ceiling and have crazy five axis so what we had to do when considering this router was think back to what are we trying to achieve with it what is the size of the parts that we're trying to achieve what is the quality and then what is the overall cost so we really got three main things that we were considering when choosing a router for machining out all the mold patterns for the plane, which was cost, accuracy, and repeatability, and then size. So this router itself fit a really good overlap of those three things. If we were to go any smaller, we're looking at piecing together a lot of different mold pattern sections to build up an entire uh, mold pattern that fit the profile for the different sections of the plane. If we go any bigger, we're looking at uh, an order of magnitude higher in cost for not that much return in terms of accuracy and precision. So this machine fit a really good overlap of those three things of cost, machine volume, and then accuracy and precision. So that's why we like this machine in particular. That is our first reason why we chose this machine over the other ones that are available on the market. Okay, so another reason why we really like this machine and chose it over other routers on the market is that what you see is what you get. So a lot of these parts, if they were to break or they were to get damaged, they are extremely easy to replace. Most of them are off the shelf. So what that meant for us is that if we had uh, an issue with it, we could quickly order a new part and replace it ourselves. If you look at higher dollar value machines, uh, some of them require a service technician to come in and actually repair the parts for you. 
we didn't have to we didn't want to have to worry about any downtime with our machine if we ran into any issues we, we like the idea of it being simple easy to work on easy to replace parts if they get damaged so that we can get back up and running really quickly if we run into any issues so that would be the second reason why we really like this machine over other routers on the market number three is that the learning curve on this router is really short if we would have gone to a higher level machine that has five axes or more moving parts, more going on with it, the learning curve would have been a lot longer. So we wanted to get this machine, we wanted to get up and running. I'm not a machinist by trade, so we had to learn this and get making parts really quickly. This router allowed us to do that. The fourth reason why we like this router is because of its low power requirements. So it's, it's only single phase 220 AC. What we like about that is that we don't have infinite power out of the shop here. When we run this router, we can also run our other machinery. We can run our Tormach, we can run our vacuum pumps, we can run power tools. We don't have to be worried about being power constrained by one machine out of the shop. So another reason why we like this, low power requirement. Number five, the reason that we like this size router in particular over going even larger is the fact that this router doesn't break the bank in terms of floor space for your shop. So with this profile, you get more options on where you want to place it in your shop. You have less complexity for leveling it. If you go larger in size for a router and even heavier, in some cases you have to pour a new slab of concrete. We didn't have to worry about that with this machine. The other thing that's really nice about it, we knew this wasn't gonna be our permanent final production shop. At some point we will have to move this into that setting with a machine this size or a router this size, it makes it a lot easier to make that move. And when we're talking about size, that leads me into number six, which is when you have a router of this dimension, this lower profile head, it's not just good for machining out mold patterns, it's also versatile in the sense that you can use it to machine out other things like your shear webs and your ribs and your bulkheads out of carbon fiber panels, which we use in the aircraft and then also our carbon fiber brackets that go into the aircraft. So we wanted this router to be versatile. We didn't want to just use it to machine out our mold patterns and be done with it. We wanted to keep using it for other things so we get even more uh, value out of this router. So with that being said, that is our top six reasons why we chose this router over other ones on the market. And let's talk really quick about some of the small tweaks and small upgrades that we've made to, made to it to get even more out of this machine. One of the first small upgrades that we did to the machine is we swapped out the MDF that you typically see for a router like this with HDPE. The reason we did that is when we had MDF on the table, any type of humidity or temperature changes tended to swell that material. When you try to put a part on here and machine it out, it led to inaccuracies from part to part, depending on the day, what the humidity level was, what the temperature was. When you swap out wood for something a little bit more dimensionally stable under those conditions, you can see a lot more consistency in the accuracy uh, from part to part. So this was a good change for us, was swapping out the wood for something like this. We try not to use this as the typical spoil board surface, if you will. Most stuff gets clamped to here and we, we try not to machine into the surface. Uh, the nice thing about HTP is it's still uh, surfaceable, so you can still come in with a planer end mill and surface this um, from time to time as need be. So we really like this upgrade. It leads to a lot more dimensional stability from day to day, depending on what that humidity may be. A Little bit difficult to control in a shop this size, but this move was definitely a really nice upgrade for us. One of the other upgrades that we did is that we actually doubled the number of cross members along the X axis. So what that does for us is a couple things. The first thing that it does is that it increases the overall rigidity of the machine and redu reduces the amount of relative motion of the machine itself when it's performing its cutting of whatever you have on here. So by increasing the rigidity of the machine, that's a really good move. You always want a machine that's more rigid and not less rigid. Uh, the other thing it did for us is that it increased the number of mount points for our spoil board to connect to, further helping to increase the rigidity of it. You can imagine, for example, if you only had three cross members going across in the x-axis, how much potential sag you could get in between those for your spoil board on top. Anytime you can increase the number of cross members, it's less weight 
or less uh, potential sag opportunity for the spoil board itself. Two last little upgrades relating to the router to get more high precision parts out of it. And these are less to do with the physical upgrades, but more of how you set it up. So one big thing relating to setup is how you level the machine. And not just leveling the machine uh, initially, but having a procedure in place to level the machine throughout the year. If you look closely, the machine actually bridges two different slabs of concrete, and those slabs, depending on the time of year, with temperature changes, water level in the ground, can actually move relative to one another. So when we initially set this up and leveled it, the first thing was we did is we had a procedure in place to make sure that we check the level of the machine every single quarter that goes on to make sure we don't have inaccuracies from part to part depending on the time of year that we're machining. The last big one is the spindle height sitting on our gantry. So there are two different options. You can buy a 12 inch amount of Z travel or you can get the eight inch. We actually opted for the lesser, the eight inches of travel. And the reason that we did that is because the higher that your spindle gets on your gantry, the more relative motion it can have and less rigidity that can have when you're machining out parts. The closer you come down to your table, the more rigidity you have, the more accuracy you have in your machining. We care about accuracy more, so we actually opted for the lesser travel in our gantry height to prioritize accuracy over machine volume. So there you have it guys, part one of our router series why we chose this router, some of the tweaks and upgrades that we've made to try to get even more precision out of it. Stay tuned though for part two, because in part two, we're gonna talk about making the mold patterns themselves, how we do that. How do you make a large one that doesn't fit on the machine out of smaller ones and get them to all fit together nicely. So stay tuned for part two, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it.